Okay, let's try to find a serious solution for the Bessel equation uh, following the form in second seven five. And we'll assume y has a series form, so we'll, we'll use the notation of the textbook. So y is equals to sum over uh, j integer from zero to infinity. And you have a coefficient a sub j, and then the x to the power of j plus an unknown index s and so because of the unknown index you can assume this start from zero or any any integer it, it would just shift the value of s okay so now we are to find all the unknown coefficient a sub j we just need to substitute this form into the equation okay so what we need to do is to take the derivative. So y prime is uh, dy dx. Y prime is uh, just take the derivative term by term. We have uh, j plus s a sub j and x j plus s. One is one. Okay. And so um, it has derivative, but uh, remember that uh, in the equation, only y prime appear with uh, multiplication by x. So actually, we need x, y, x times y prime rather than just y prime. So, uh, so later on, we can multiply that by x. But before we do that, we take a second derivative because we also need the second derivative. So y double point is just do another division. X plus minus two. Okay, so now you have y pile and y double pile. Again, this is y double pile only appear here in this term, and you multiply the x square. So what we need is x squared times y double prime. So now uh, let's do that. So x times y pi, we just cancel this minus one factor. So let's just get rid of that. And then x squared times y double pi, we only get rid of this minus two. Okay, so so far so good, right? And now you, you also have this y when you substitute it, this into here, so that's fine, you have n squared, and then you have an x squared here, so you need to work out this x squared times y, and that's uh, when the, I'll do something a little bit uh, different from the textbook, so uh, this is just multiplied by the x squared factor, that becomes x j plus x plus two. Okay, so now you see the odd, all the this terms, this terms, and, and this n squared times so n squared is just a number times y, which is this term, all has the form of x to the power j plus s. And now this one has the form j plus s plus two. So um what I usually do, I try to make all terms have the same form, the same power of x. You don't have to follow my way, but that's what, what I'm doing. The text, the text will be a little different. But uh, we try to move it to shift the index such that this is uh, of the same same form. Uh, so you, you change this to j plus s instead of j plus s plus 2. And the, I mean, if you can, if you uh, smart enough, you can actually just write that uh, uh, immediately. But uh, if you're like me, so uh, you need to work out a little bit. So you want the J plus S plus two change to J plus S. But uh, 
that might be a little confusing. And another way to do it is just uh, in, introduce another in, index, like uh, say we have j plus s plus q equals to j pi plus t. That means that j is, uh, I, I should say j plus s plus j plus s, not j plus t. If we want to get which of the two. Okay, then this means uh, j is j pi minus two. So that, uh, so this becomes a sum over a, j becomes j pi minus two, and this becomes x to the j pi plus s. Okay, so that is it. Now, uh, the only thing left is to work out is uh, the limit of, of j pi. So j pi is, when j is zero, when j is zero, j pi is two. Okay. And um, infinity is still infinity. So that is, uh, you can just shift the index of a becomes a sub j pi minus two. Now, after you finish this step, you can get rid of the, all the prime because j prime is just an index, just like j is a, is an arbitrary index. You get rid of the the the, the prime. So get rid of the prime. Okay, so that this uh, x squared times y becomes this one. So, all right. The only, only thing changes is this lower limit of this term is stuff of two instead of stuff of zero. Okay, so now you put everything in, in this equation. Okay, um, we can work that out. So these are the, all the terms in here. Okay. So you just add everything because everything is uh, from uh, everything has this this x squared plus s. This is start from two. So all starting from two, everything else start from zero. So start from two, you have uh, you have this equation. So start from two, sum of j equals to two to infinity. So the first term is this one. So you have uh, actually all, all this term, this term, this term, and this term, all proportional a sub, a sub j. So you can group all these terms. So you have uh, this term, j plus s minus, j plus s minus what? This one is this one, and this one is, just uh, j plus s, right? And then this one and then minus one squared. Okay, and all proportional to a j, right? Now it's this term, this which is this term. Okay, and then uh, all you need to do is plus. A sub j minus two. Okay. And then at the same proportion x to the j minus x. Okay. So that's uh, starting from j from two to infinity. All these uh, coefficients satisfy this equation. And the right hand side is zero. Okay. And also you have the, the, the j equals to zero or j equals to one, right? So you have two more terms. Okay, so uh, for when, you have, when j, is, j is zero and one, you don't have this, you don't have this term. You only have these three terms. You have this one, this one, and this one, right? So, uh, so you, basically you don't have this term, you only have uh, this term, 
and evaluate at uh, j equals to zero and j equals to one. So uh, like for j equals zero, basically this coefficient need to be zero. So from j equals zero, you have s times s minus one, and this is zero plus s minus s squared, and that multiplies a sub zero plus c zero. Okay, so that's j equals zero. J equals one is the same, so you have a so j equals one, this is s plus one. And this is one, one minus one is six. And then uh, this is one. This one is zero. Okay. And obviously you you don't want the coefficient to be zero and both to be zero. One of them is to be zero is okay, but one of them should not be zero. So if you assume the a sub zero is not zero, so the brackets need to be uh, zero. So that's called the uh, uh, the initial con initial equation. So that will determine what the s the s index is. So now work that out, you have s times s is s squared, and then you have minus s plus s, cancel the two, this so way have s squared minus n squared equals to zero. Okay, so, so that's the initial equation. So the solution is quite trivial. So s is uh, n or minus n, okay, because it's square, so, but, uh, because the equation only n square appears. So actually these two, uh, you can say whatever is which doesn't matter because you can always choose n to be positive and negative because uh, only n, n square is uh, appearing here. But uh, so you can work out just one of them and then the other solution with it, just using the let n becomes uh, negative. So you got first assume n is positive, then you then the second equation will be setting n to be negative. So it's, it's just the same. Okay, so that is uh, the first equation. The second equation, see if you can satisfy. So this is, uh, again, uh, you have uh, S squared. Then you have uh, plus two S. S here, you have S here, and then plus one, and then minus n squared. So if s squared minus n squared is zero, so this is this is uh, this two cancel. But then you're left with two s plus one. So uh and this is that special and s is equal to n n is minus one half of that uh, this will not be zero. So the only only way to make it zero for the for the general situation is setting a sub one to zero. So, so you can set a sub one to zero. Okay, so that's uh that's work out the, the two of the coefficients. Now the rest of the coefficient is coming from this equation because now you have uh, a sub j here, this is a sub j minus two. And say for j equals two, this becomes zero, this becomes two. So a sub two can be solved based on a, a sub zero by this equation. Okay. And we can simplify a little bit the coefficient because uh, then we, we need to uh, divide this coefficient to the other side. So uh, let's just write it this way. So you have a sub j equals to put that to the other side is minus a sub j minus two, and then divided by this uh, coefficient. And this coefficient, like uh, let's put the L, what, what that is. You have j. Uh, you have uh, j plus s here. You have minus one. And so minus one multiplied by j plus s. 
So this this one will cancel with uh, minus one term. So you're left with uh, this a plus s square, right? And then minus n square. Okay, and now we can work it out. You know, what j plus s square is, right? Um, so like j plus s square and then minus n square. But then at uh, s is already chosen to be n or minus n. Or we can work out the uh, because we have s squared, that will cancel with the n square. So j, j plus s square is j square plus 2j times s, s, so s can be, just let it be n, and then plus s square, plus s square minus n square, which is zero, because of this equation. So that is uh, the, Simplified form, we, we, we can do it a, a little bit more. So minus at least j plus minus two. Get j out. This becomes uh, j plus two n. Okay, so you have this uh, recurrence formula for for j or the j. So, so because uh, you have a zero, a sub zero, then the next one you can get is uh, from j equals to two. So you can say a, a sub two, this becomes a sub zero. And now a sub two will give you a sub four and so on. So you have all the even, uh, a, j equals even terms. For all the odd term, you're, you're also using that, because, but the a sub one is zero. So if j is 3, then this is a sub 1, which is 0. Then a sub 3 is 0. So And so all the j is odd will become 0. So this is a sub 3 is 0 for all. j is odd. OK. So that is now. So you only have all the, all the even j terms. Oh. All right. Uh, then, then we have kind of done here, but then uh, if you like, you want to get the nicer form, write, write the whole uh, solution y in a single form. And to do that, uh, we can work a little bit, uh, see if we can have uh, a formula for you know, order a, a general expression for all the a's of j, and we know that all j must be uh, must be must be even. So we can say j equals to, or we can just say a shift j to two j, right? And now uh, all the j becomes two j. So a j equals to minus a t j minus one. This is two j, and then you have another two because we have two. This one two j two times two is four, or two square, and then you have j times j plus one. Okay, so that uh, that's iteration, but that's not uh, that's not a uh, explicit e expression. So uh, we can try to see a, a general formula by work out a few terms, like uh, a sub two with the minus what for j. Now it's j equals to one, so this is it. j is one, so a sub zero. So this is one, this is a n plus one, so you have two to the two. 
and this one, this is uh, one. Okay, and one thing to to do that uh, to make it a a, a nicer formula is uh, if uh, if n is the the formula listed in the text will assume n is integer, then then this you can change that to uh, one plus n to the factorial, and then uh, multiply n factorial numerator that will cancel n factorial from this uh, n plus one factorial and give you one plus n and one plus n in the denominator. Okay, so that's that one way to do it. And but one remark is that when n is not uh, integer, then uh, you cannot write it as a factorial. But uh, later on, we'll learn about the gamma function. You can use uh, instead of writing it as a factorial, we can write using gamma function. So this becomes gamma function. Uh, uh, so you, you can have a more general formula. N is not integer, but uh, we stay with a uh, integer first, and then just keep in mind that we can generalize that to, to using gamma function also. Okay, so this is uh, this is two. So when a is when j is two, this this new j new j j is two. Uh, then uh, we got uh, this form. We can do it one more time. So, like uh, a, when, so j is uh, when j is one here. So two j two one is two times one is two. When j is two, this becomes four. Now that is uh, this is two. So this a minus a sub two divided by two. You get two power, and then you have two here. And then t plus n, right? And then uh, you then substitute this in here. That becomes a uh, minus minus is plus. You have a a sub zero and n factorial. And then you have two to the power two. And then. Uh, and you have this uh, another two to the power two, so two to the power four. And then you have a two here. And you have two plus n plus two times n plus one factorial, which is n plus two factorial. So increase uh, the to change it to j equals to two, basically you changed it from n plus one factorial to n plus two factorial and also divided by a, uh, uh, a factor of two. Okay, and uh, so every time you do that, uh, obviously you will divide it by another another j, right? So this is j is equals to two in here, so divided by two. This is j equals one, so there's a one here, this is two here. And this is two to the power two, and two times uh, two times j, which is four, okay? Now, uh, then uh, you can keep, keep doing that and get like a sub six, a sub eight, and so on and so forth, but the, uh, the general idea would be, and also there you have a minus sign. Every time you, uh, you increase j plus by one, you get uh, you get uh, another negative sign. So we combine all of these and let's see if we can have the space in here. So a the two j now it's uh, as related to the a sub zero. So First, you have this minus um, this minus sign depends on j or j equals to one is negative. 
j equals two becomes positive. So you have this minus one to the j power. And you have a sub zero. And then you have this antithelia. You always keep antithelia, antithelia, antithelia. And then uh, this is two. And this is always a two to the power two times uh, the whatever the j index. So this is two to the two j. And then uh, every time you divide it by j, so this is a j for j. And then you have this. Uh, this uh, this is n plus one, this is n plus two, so this is n plus j. Okay, so that is um, the, the general formula for a to the 2j. Okay, now uh, once we have, when we have that, uh, we can substitute this. All the odd term is zero. Or the even terms are given by this one again. And then S is, uh, we have chosen S equals to N. Okay, so uh, then we can write, write out this formula. And these are just the intermediate steps. Okay, and then just put everything in here. And remember this J is now this not the same J now because uh, this J becomes two J actually, this J becomes two J. Okay, so uh, the Y is equals to sum over J. Now J is from one thing. Right, uh, now you have all, also that the A sub zero also. And let's see if it works for a sub zero. If j is zero, then this is zero, this is one. Zero factorial is assumed to be one. This is uh, two to the zero is uh, one. Zero factorial is one. This the n factorial is here, and then that's n plus j, n plus zero factorial is to cancel. We get back to the a, a sub zero, so that's fine. So you can start the j from zero. And the whole formula is minus one to the j a sub zero and factorial b minus two two to the power two j j factorial n plus j factorial and then the order x x to the remember this becomes two j and then uh, you have S, S is just N. Okay, so that would be the, the final, the final form of the solution. And that solution depends on the arbitrary constants of J because this is a linear equation. You can always have a, a arbitrary proportionality constant. It uh, depends on what your choice of a sub j. I think the, the textbook chosen that uh, a sub j is uh, get which of uh, a sub c or is get which of this uh, uh, n factorial. In fact, because n is also constant. Um, but anyway, the, that depends on how you, you, you define the basal function. Okay, and uh, now this is the the equation assuming that uh, just choose s equals n, and we already talked about that. Uh, if n is, uh, you choose, if you choose the other solution, you just basically is this solution and choose let n become that to n. But uh, if n is integer, then you get a problem because uh, start from j from zero, the infinity somewhere along the line, this would hit zero. And uh, so that would, would not be very good. And but the later on, when we talk about basal function, we know that we'll learn about that uh, basal function or integer order, the negative order, negative integer order is not independent of the positive, positive or, uh, order, basal function. So 
they are actually linear dependent. So j is j to the minus n is proportional to j j sub n. Unless n is a real number. If n is a real number, then there's no such problem. n can be positive or negative if you don't have zero in the denominator, and that, that is fine. And uh, but again the if n is energy, not an energy real number, this we we need to write this uh, in terms of gamma function rather than vectorial. And so uh so that is for the CS solution.